In 1917, the United States entered World War I, creating a huge demand for munitions, armaments, and war material. Responding to this need, Henry Leland and a portion of his engineering and management team left the Cadillac Motor Car Company, a division of General Motors, to manufacture Liberty aircraft engines, seen here. Their new company was named the Lincoln Motor Company. An armistice ending World War I hostilities was signed in 1918, and Liberty aircraft engine production ceased. The Lincoln Motor Company now had a modern, large, well-equipped manufacturing plant and a fully trained workforce, which was quickly converted to manufacturing the Lincoln luxury automobile. The plant was located at the corner of West Warren Avenue in Livernoy in Detroit. Unfortunately, just as the new Lincoln automobile was introduced, the United States suffered a significant economic recession in 1920 and 1921. Sales of the Lincoln motor car suffered to the point that the company was forced into bankruptcy. At 11 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, February 4, 1922, at the entrance to the Lincoln Administration Building, the Lincoln Motor Company is publicly auctioned. The standing master in Chancery, William Sayers Jr., is reading the relevant documents. Thousands of people are in attendance, including factory employees who have been idle for months, newspaper reporters, and many other interested parties. Standing by the side are the three bidders for the company. On the right is Harold Emmons, a prominent Detroit lawyer, representing both the Lelands and the Fords. During the war, Emmons had charge of the production of aviation engines, made in 23 plants in various parts of the country, including the Liberty engine. Nearby, the founders of the company, Henry Leland and his son, Wilfred Leland, stand watching the progress. Wilfred had been in serious discussions with Henry and Ansel Ford about purchasing the company, along with the Leland's attorney, Harold Emmons, since November of 1921. The master in chancery then called for bidders, and attorney Emmons threw up his arm and said, I bid $8 million for Henry Ford. Other bids are called for, but the other two men standing by declined to bid. One week later, on Saturday, February 11, 1922, Ansel and Eleanor Ford arrived for the closing driving a four-door Lincoln sedan and walk up to the Lincoln headquarters to be greeted by the Lelands. Soon, Henry and Clara Ford arrive in a chauffeured two-door Lincoln sedan and walk up to join and be greeted by the Lelands as well as Edsel and Eleanor Ford. Apparently, Henry Leland is happy with the situation, and he performs a little dance. Then, reluctantly, Henry Ford and Ansel join in, all of which the ladies find very amusing. As president of Ford since 1919, 28-year-old Ansel Bryant Ford signs the check to purchase the Lincoln Motor Company. His father peers over his shoulder. The words Ford Motor Company can be seen at the top of the check, as he uses an ink blotter on his signature. Then, they all pose, with serious faces, for an historic photograph. In return for the closing papers, the check for $8 million is passed from Edsel Ford to Ralph Stone, the receiver of the Lincoln Motor Company, by attorney Emmons. On hand to witness this event, besides the four Ford and Leland principals, are their wives, Clara Bryant Ford, Blanche Dewey Leland, and Eleanor Clay Ford. The other young couple in attendance are friends of Edsel and Eleanor, Harvey Firestone Jr. and his wife, Elizabeth Park Firestone, the parents of William Clay Ford's wife, Martha Firestone Ford. Afterwards, the two Henrys, Edsel and Wilfred, drive off together in a Lincoln touring car. Initially, it was agreed that the Lelands would continue to manage the company, but only a few months later, they left due to irreconcilable differences with Ford's management. 
After the sale, Lincoln employees assembled on the steps of the Lincoln Administration Building for a group photograph. In front stood Wilfred Leland, Henry Ford, Henry Leland, and Edsel Ford. The original stone Lincoln letters and oak leaf decorations surrounding the clock were removed from the building when it was demolished in 2003 and are now standing on the floor of the museum. Unfortunately, the clock was long gone and its fate is unknown. The inspiration for the museum's exterior appearance was the Peter J. Platt Lincoln dealership constructed in the early 1920s at 3700 East Jefferson Avenue in Detroit. It was built in a neoclassical architectural style appropriate for the luxury image of the Lincoln automobile and was an imposing edifice typical of many luxury automobile dealerships of the era. By 1937, the Jefferson Avenue dealership was operating under the name A.W. Racer, and the signage indicates that Ford automobiles were offered in addition to the new Lincoln Zephyrs seen here.